الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وأنم علينا عظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قول أما بعد All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah Almighty and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah Brothers and sisters The rain the ghayth is what we call in Arabic. The rain is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this rain can come as a mercy from Allah that we call ghayth or a punishment from Allah that's called in Arabic matar. The term ghayth is used when the rain is coming for a benefit. And the term matar is used when it's coming for a punishment. This rain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sends it as a mercy to those whom Allah azza wa jal wants mercy to. And Allah azza wa jal will send it as a punishment to those who Allah azza wa jal wants to punish. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say certain dua, supplication, when the rain used to come down. And this rain, ikhwani, as I mentioned, it's a rahma from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Life depends on this rain and death also comes because of no rain and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses some areas some places with rain and others don't but no one knows or understands the reality of the water until people really miss it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُ مِنْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ مَا أَكُمْ غَوْرًا فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَاءٍ مَعِينٍ Say if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this water that you get impossible for you to take out. It's dried in the ground. And it's impossible for you to take it out. Allah Almighty, He says, who will get you with, who can get you a fresh water? This water, ikhwani, it's a miracle within itself. But because we drink it, we use it, we wash ourselves with it, it becomes so normal in our lives. But the reality of it, it is a miracle. And this water, ikhwan, everything depends on water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, That we had made every living thing from water. Every living thing is being made from water. And everything in life needs water. And even the bricks, you need water. Building, you need water. Medicine, you need water. Everything depends on water. So water, water it is... A great substance, a great liquid on earth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created for this mankind. And it comes subhanAllah as a rahmah, as a mercy for those who Allah azza wa jal wants to send mercy on. And it also comes as a punishment for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to send a punishment on. And from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah upon us, they had made us from the best of nations. The, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, you were the best of people to be brought out to people. You call for which is good and prevent from which is bad and believe in Allah. Allah had made the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the best of nations. And the reason that Allah made this nation to be the best of nations because of many aspects and one of those aspects is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted this nation a great job. This is the job on calling for which is good, preventing from which is bad, that we have spoken about in the last three weeks about which is the da'wah. And da'wah, my brothers and sisters, is an important aspect in our life. Da'wah is an important aspect in our life. And as a Muslim, I am a da'iyah in every moment of my life I'm a da'ya in every period of my life I'm a da'ya wherever I go I'm a da'ya wherever I sit I'm a da'ya wherever I be 
I am a Muslim, I'm a da'iyah, and I am someone who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with tonight, it's our final night within this series of da'wah. Maybe speaking about the da'wah, a lot of us do say, okay, how do I give da'wah? And we spoke about that a bit last week to continue, inshallah, with tonight. A lot of us do have this problem of giving da'wah. And many of us think that da'wah is just by speech. Okay, go and give da'wah, but I don't know how to speak. Who said da'wah is speech? Who said da'wah is only speech? But da'wah is speech and many other things in life. And this is where a lot of people take it as an obstacle. I don't know how to give da'wah because I don't know how to speak. But da'wah doesn't only rely on your speaking. Da'wah is every good thing that you do in your life is da'wah. How many people that we hear entered Islam without hearing one word? It's just seeing the actions of people. Just seeing the actions of Muslims, this encouraged them to enter Islam. By seeing the actions of good believing Muslims, this encouraged them to be believers. And we always give that example of something that's not far away from us, which is for example a country like Indonesia, and it has the most biggest Muslim population in the world, over 200 million Muslims. Those 200 million Muslims entered Islam not long ago. They entered Islam, they entered Islam just centuries ago, not like other countries who have been for about more than 10 centuries. And it's very famous and well known that this great nation with this great number that entered Islam, entered Islam through the actions of good Muslim tradesmen. Who they were honest in their dealings, they were honest in their transactions, they were honest in their speech, they were honest in the way they dealt with business. And this is something that, especially at those time and eras, when there was no such thing called laws and governments, everyone just cares about themselves and whatever they could eat from the poor they'll do. When they saw these high morals and manners of the Muslims, and you're talking about Muslims who came from Yemen, who don't know how to speak Indonesian, and Indonesians who don't know how to speak Arabic. And because of the, the akhlaq of the Muslims, and the way the Muslims dealt in their dealings with buying and selling, with their honesty, with their speech, this encouraged a big nation that we are proud that it's part of us or are part of to be a Muslim. This da'wah that hit 200 million Muslims, hit them with what? With the speech? Did someone get up and say, oh people, Islam says this, Islam says that? It wasn't what we've heard of. We heard it was about the good mu'amalat, the good dealings, the good akhlaq, the good morals of the Muslims who changed these nations. And maybe my brothers and sisters, maybe it was the good mu'amalat, the good Akhlaq, the good manners and morals of one good Muslim tradesman that made 200 million Muslims right now believe in Allah Azza wa and follow Islam. So maybe because of that one person, Allah made that big change. And that's why my brothers and sisters, maybe because of you, maybe because of you, Allah Azza wa will make a big change in the future. That big change could be a positive or a negative. That big change could be a positive thing that because of you, your good akhlaq, your good morals, your good, your good ethics, your good way of dealings with others can bring millions of people later on entering Islam. Maybe you would not see that while you're alive, but after the many years and centuries, it could be nations like Indonesia, for example, enters Islam because one of their ancestors saw your good akhlaq and good mu'amalat. And at the same time, Maybe because of your bad mu'amalat, because your bad example, especially when you speak like a Muslim, and your name is a Muslim and you look like a Muslim, because your bad mu'amalat, this could take away millions of people who could have become a Muslim. And that's why my brothers and sisters, Islam always tells us, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, made that message very clear, not only in the minds of the companions, but in the hearts of the companions, that they understood this clearly, that they do have a responsibility of being a Muslim. I have a big responsibility of being a Muslim. 
me entering Islam, me saying I am a Muslim, is not just like I could sit down and lay back and just live my personal life however I want. No, but me being a Muslim, I have a great responsibility over my shoulders that I must lead by a good example. And everything that I might say, everything that I might do, everything that I might act upon can have an impact. And I want you to think about this, maybe because of this one good trades, that one good Muslim tradesman who dealt with honesty, one massive nation changed to Islam. That you have now 200 million Muslims that you could say now that are like a 10% of the Muslim world. That all comes back to one good Muslim tradesman or maybe a group of them a few centuries ago. Because of that, look at this big difference that you see right now. Could you imagine if all Muslims led by a good example? Could you imagine if all Muslims were a good example? What would have happened to this world? Ikhwani wallahi, people will be fighting to be part of Islam. Because our religion is so beautiful, our religion is so bright, our religion is so clear, that people are so attracted to this deen. We could hear day by day, especially in the West, that the percentage of suicidal is just increasing day by day. And people are just resorting to suicide or res resorting to drugs or resorting to this or resorting to that. All this because of what? There's emptiness. And nothing will fill up the emptiness in this world except the book of Allah, the Quran and Kareem. And nothing will fill up the emptiness except that Shahada la ilaha Allah Muhammad Rasulullah. But what's the obstacle for many people to become Muslims? In many cases, Ikhwani are Muslims themselves. Muslims are not leading but a good example. You see a Muslim acting like a non-Muslim. A Muslim acting like a gangster. A Muslim acting like a criminal. A Muslim acting like a hooligan. A Muslim acting like this person. A Muslim like... And forgetting to act like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all I need you, ikhwani, not all Muslims to lead by a good example. Wallahi, ikhwani, if 50% or even less from the Muslim population and nation led by a good example, we would have been in a different world. We would have been in a different world. And what made the Muslims reach to the state they're in now is because we always throw the responsibility on him and her. Ya Allah, he sh he'll lead by a good example. He'll sacrifice. She'll do a good job in Islam. He'll speak well in Islam. He'll act good. He'll do good. How about you? Oh, I've got no responsibility. And everyone just throwing their responsibilities on others. He is the one responsible. He is not responsible. We forgot. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun ar ra'iyyati. Every single one of you is responsible and every single one of you is responsible for their responsibility. We are all responsible. Regardless what knowledge you have. Regardless how you look. Regardless what language you speak. Regardless what nation you come from. Regardless what color is your skin. Regardless what environment you live in, every single one of us is responsible. And you look at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the success is when you look at the people around the Prophet Sallallahu they all understood this. All of them without an exception. All those who were around the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu understood that. You rarely find someone from those who were around the Prophet Sallallahu did not understand that. You rarely find that. They all understood that and they all, they all acted upon it. And that's why there was the, the massive and great result, ikhwani. There was that massive and great result. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you, for the little that you do, great results. For the little that you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you great results. For the little that you do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the little that you do for Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you massive results. For the little that the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did, Allah Azza wa gave them the opening of the East and the West when a massive great nation will take them centuries to do. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam managed to do that in decades. Well, because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants you to do, and for the little that you do, Allah Azza wa will give you more. And for the little that we do, of the little of the companions, Allah Azza wa give us even more. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, that these people about us who come later on in life who believe in the Prophet Muhammad which we're all here
because we believe in the Prophet ﷺ, but we don't see the Prophet ﷺ because none of us has seen the Prophet ﷺ only Allahumma in the dreams, only maybe in the dreams. And this 14 centuries between us and the Prophet ﷺ, 1,400 years between us and the Prophet ﷺ. So none of us he saw the Prophet ﷺ and none of us will get to see the Prophet ﷺ in person in this dunya. The Prophet ﷺ spoke about us and he said that for the little that we do, for the actions that we do, Allah Azza wa Jalla will give us 50 rewards. 50 rewards. So the companion said, or messenger of Allah, 50 rewards from our rewards or their rewards. Because 50 rewards of their rewards means it's a lot more than the 50 rewards of our rewards. Because they do a lot more than what we do. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in another hadith to them that if you leave 10% of the deen, usur, 10% of this deen, the 10th of this deen, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would not accept from you. Where our nation will come later on, they'll do 10th of the deen and Allah will accept from them. So they asked our messenger of Allah, 50 rewards, our rewards, 50 rewards, their rewards. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, your rewards. The rewards of the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum. You will get 50 rewards from the rewards of the companions for the actions that the normal companion used to do. So what they'll get one reward for, you'll get 50 rewards. What they'll get 1,000 rewards, you'll get 50,000. What they'll get 1 million rewards, you get 50 million. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he even mentioned that. He said, because... You find, he's talking, addressing the companions, you find who? To support you on the haq. You have what to support you on the haq. In which thou would not probably have what you have right now. For that, my brothers and sisters, we are responsible. And this is the message that we keep on speaking about. To understand that I am responsible. And maybe sometimes, ikhwani, there is that problem that a lot of times we don't know. And if we know, we don't understand. And if we understood, we don't act upon it. A lot of times, we don't know. And if we know, we don't understand. And if we understand, we don't act upon. And this is a big problem. When you look at the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and the companions around him, if they didn't know, They'll learn and then they will learn and know. And when they know, they will understand. And then when they understand, they'll act upon what they understood one. And for that, maybe today or before today, I didn't know I had responsibility. No, I do. I didn't understand that responsibility. No, I do. Now what's the next step now? Is to, for you to act upon that responsibility. It's for you right now to act upon that responsibility. And this common saying, my brothers, is what one of the enemies of Islam, he was mocking Muslims and Arabs especially, when they were in a gathering plotting against Islam and Muslims, he said, don't worry about the Arabs. The Arabs, they don't know. And if they know, they don't understand. And if they understand, they don't act upon what they understood. This is a common saying of a famous enemy of Islam and the Arab in the early days and that's what he described the Muslims to be and if it's a right description to be described then we are indeed in a disaster then we are indeed in a disaster and any nation that adopts such principle of not understanding and if they understand that they don't act upon what they understand it is a chaos and it is a problem and that's why you find a lot of the Muslims and you find a lot, that's why you find Muslims in particular at this time and era, we are suffering. And we are facing a big problem, although we are a big nation. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the whole ummah will gain up on you and attack you. The way how a group of people get together on one plate, they said, oh messenger of Allah, is it because we are small in number? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, you are big in number, but you like a froth that has no weight to you. You have a, you're like a froth that has no weight to you. And this is what's happening with the Muslim Ummah. We are so big in our number. 
But there's not that respect. There's no respect. There's no fear. There's no dignity. Why? Because again, we don't know. And if we know, we don't understand. And if we do understand, we don't act upon it. And I'm not going to be here, sitting here tonight, to revive that disease that was spread in the Muslim Ummah of always just whinging and complaining and do nothing. Because this is another big problem that we'll always do whinge and complain and do nothing about it. But I want from tonight that myself and yourself, whatever we did not know, we know. And whatever we didn't understand, we understand. And whatever we understood, we act upon. And if it starts from here, from this little circle, ya akhwani, we'll spread to another circle. And from one to two and two to six and six to more. It starts from one person and then spreads for us to start carrying the responsibility and start making others, Ya Ikhwani, we have this responsibility towards this deen. And I have a responsibility of being a Muslim. That whatever I do, I am accountable for. Or whatever I say, I am accountable for. And whatever I act, I am accountable for. And whatever I do in life, I am accountable for. I should be leading as a good Muslim, Ya Ikhwani. I should be leading as a good Muslim. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that, the, that the, when he used to send a group of companions, he could be like a birthmark, distinguished. And it is hard that someone might say, but now I have to sacrifice some of my personal or private life just to make sure I implement and act as a good Muslim to attract people to Islam. Well, a Muslim, as what one of the scholars described, is like a candle. Burns itself for the sake of giving light to others. This is what a Muslim is. A Muslim is like that candle. Burns itself for the sake of giving light to others. But at the end of the day, the true lighting will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The true light and the true happiness and success will come from Allah when you stand in front of Allah azza wa as being proud as a proud Muslim that you sacrificed your life for the sake of Islam and spreading Islam. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was no doubt like that candle who Nabi alayhi wa sacrificed everything, everything from his life for the sake of Islam. His time, his energy, his wealth, everything that he had alayhi salatu wa sallam was given for the sake of this responsibility. And we do, must, on every single one of us to revive what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived for and to live for what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived for. And to do what the Prophet Sallallahu did. And to think what the Prophet Sallallahu thought of. And to be like the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. For that, my brothers and sisters, let us all carry that responsibility. Engrave it in our mind and say, yes, I am. I am responsible. And I'm responsible for everything I do. And I am a Muslim who's an attraction to others. Especially Muslims and non-Muslims. And it doesn't only start with non-Muslims. And this is something I spoke about last week. That when we say da'wah, okay, da'wah, I have to be like Ahmad Didat, rahimahullah, so I could give da'wah to non-Muslims. Who said da'wah is only to non-Muslims? A lot of Muslims need that da'wah too. A lot of Muslims who are far away from Islam who need to be given that da'wah. So I'll also be a good example. Someone with responsibility to my, to my Muslim brothers, to my Muslim sisters. Be an attraction to them. Bring them to the deen of Allah. Remind them of Islam, remind them of the duty, remind them of their responsibility. And I know it's been a bit late, Ikhwani. Inshallah, I'll stop over here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you all. May Allah azza wa jal use you all for this deen. Subhanakallah, bhabdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta astafro To listen to or download more Islamic lectures, please visit www.islamicmedia.com.au.